Hi there everybody, uh, Peter of England here bringing you a video on the recent uh, situation in the United States uh, concerning the government closure and uh, how this is going to affect uh, the continuing situation globally and the effects particularly that will ricochet into the United Kingdom. Um, as many of you may be aware, um, this is now the longest government shutdown uh, in the history of the United States government. Uh, we have around about 800,000 um, employees of the federal government who are either working for no pay or are what's called furloughed. Um, now, as I described in the previous video, um, in all probability, and it's my expectation, that this is a deliberate trap that has been seeded for the Democratic Party um, and in all probability I suspect that the government will never reopen and uh, if it does it will never be in the same format as, as it was uh, historically. Now one of the reasons for this is to prove or for Donald Trump and the junta that is in power in uh, the United States to prove the excesses of American government and the federal level uh, are um, in effect just uh, unsupportable and uh, are not required. It's also a very very effective and uh, expedient way to slim down the uh, departments within the United States and the various government departments and show that they one are not necessary and secondly do not need the funding that has typically been allocated to them. Most of these departments may be for every five people that are uh, in occupation within them they might only need two or three and the others are just juiced in through connections um, for a nice easy uh, existence and a pension at the end of it. So, um, that being said, um, this government shutdown is a, a world changer and it's going to have far and uh, extensive repercussions globally. Um, one of the reasons I'm making the video is just to explain to people in the United Kingdom that this is also a project that we expect to manifest here in the United Kingdom and that what I am looking for uh, is to close down the, the government as such to prove that it is unnecessary um, and in another way to show that the 650 incumbents in Westminster Parliament from... Um, the people like Keir Starmer, through um, Dominic Grieve, through um, Corbyn, May, Hammond, et al. are traitors to the people and are there not to serve you or your best interests, but to serve a globalist agenda, a cabal of economic interests that do not have any of your, um, your future or your interests at heart. Um, the major point on this is this Brexit fiasco that is a can that's been kicked down the road for the past two and a half years and it is only the intention of these interested individuals within Westminster, uh, around 80% of them, of the parliamentarians who are in favour of remaining, that are doing just that. They're trying to ensure that you remain in the club that will not allow anyone else to leave. And please ask yourself, all the Remainers, why would you wish to be part of any uh, organisation that would not allow you to leave? Um, in an amicable type of divorce settlement, it would always be seen to be very predatory if the woman refused to allow the male to leave or the male refused to let the woman leave by holding them hostage to a whole range or gamut of uh, financial uh, requirements uh, and, uh, shall we say, emotional blackmail. So for the past two and a half years, the United Kingdom residents or the citizens have been uh, held hostage to all these threats of what may happen. And Theresa May is the happen. And she is the worst outcome that could possibly be a thrust upon the, the people of the United Kingdom. So uh, I've announced the fact that uh, we are going to be holding meetings, uh, Brexit to exit meetings, not only to ensure that Brexit happens, but also to the fact that the UK then exits. Now, for many people, they might refer to the fact that the, um, the agenda for making it a supportable situation with an exit from the Act of Union, 1707, might be unsustainable economically. Um, I've got something now that I'm going to reveal to you through this very, very interesting uh, video. Um, shows that not only what I suggested in the past, a, a financial uh, commercial UK transaction tax 
at 1% is very, very feasible, but also the fact that we are in a very, very uh, intriguing time and a changing world shows that major implications of what's happening in the United States are going to tsunami and crash down on all economies of the world. One of the reasons it's going to happen is that there are groups of individuals who are possibly, should we say, well-intentioned towards your welfare and well-being, who are trying to head off the likes of the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, the World Bank and the IMF from causing a global collapse in the economy and the currencies. And how they're trying to do this uh, is to ensure that if these organizations, of which I've just mentioned, do try to do this, then there is a safety net under you or a set of uh, um, supports to head off a potential sort of 1930s Great Depression type of scenario, which are always or inevitably precursors to social upheaval. Um, so let's cut to the chase and refer now to two bills that have been introduced into Congress, which, which is uh, the 116th Congressional sitting in the United States in the early part of January. And these two, um, these two bills are H.R. 24 and H.R. 25, and they're accessible on what's called uh, congress.gov website. So please go and look at those. Uh, I'll try and put the links in down below. But if I forget, just type in congress.gov HR24116 HR25116 and you will be led to the following most amazing set of circumstances. So for all the detractors of the Trump uh, organization, uh, for all of those who are unaware that the military are in control of the United States government and have officially been in that position since the 14th of September 2001 when a state of national emergency was declared following the bombing of the Twin Towers, um, what we have is a situation where uh, military tribunals uh, are in position to be able to try um, anyone that is found or by a military tribunal to be acting in uh, a traitorous or treasonous manner against the interests of the United States. So that's a fairly long reaching um, arm for, the, for, for military tribunals acting in a legal capacity and leads us on to the two following points. These two bills that have been introduced, you should ask yourself if this is true and if this can happen, this is the biggest upset and this is the biggest change within the economic and taxation systems that the world has ever seen. And why I include the world in that is that the United States Federal Reserve um, and the reserve currency, which is the United States dollar, is the major plank to prop up all of the financial uh, institutions on the planet. Uh, because oil is traded in dollars, gold is traded in dollars, and um, the largest trading economy in the world, arguably, maybe in second if you put China in uh, as first, is the second place would be the United States. So, let's cut and read the, the following. HR 24, what does it involve? Well, HR 24 is a bill to what's called require a full audit of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve Banks by the Controller General of the United States and for other purposes. 1913, the Federal Reserve created, the uh, Federal Reserve Act came into force just a couple of days before Christmas. I think that was the 23rd of December 1913. Prior to the next stage of the, um, should we say, the, 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 the pre-planned agenda of the false flag First World War. And what we've had since then is the Federal Reserve in control of the money supply in the United States. So we have a bill introduced here, I think it was on the 3rd of January, to bring about the full audit of the Federal Reserve and all that that entails. Imagine, it's never been audited ever before, and lots of people have tried. So it seems now that Trump and his uh, organization uh, are in a very, very powerful position to, to make sure that that happens. But in and of itself, that would not be the, the, the amazing uh, news that it is. 
unless then we jump to HR25, which is another bill. And this is most interesting because it reads as follows. A bill to promote freedom, fairness and economic, economic opportunity by repealing, and wait for it, repealing the income tax and other taxes, abolishing the Internal Revenue Service and enacting a national sales tax to be administered primarily by the states. So to move from a federal, illegal, non-ratified taxation system to a state-run sales tax. Now they're proposing that that sales tax might be around about 23%, uh, a little high, uh, but a financial UK commercial transaction tax, or FUCT as I call it, is at 1% possible to bring in around about three times the, uh, the total uh, revenue that HMRC brings in in any one year. At that moment, it, uh, the present it approximates around about 680 to 700 billion and a threefold minimum increase on that uh, if we leave off um, the Forex, um, a tax on the Forex uh, and uh, the London International Financial Futures Exchange would still bring in a factor of probably two point one to three trillion a year. So all taxes would be abolished, PAYE would go, VAT would go, your tax on the fuel, airport surcharge tax, um, insurance surcharge taxes would go, capital t gains tax would go, all personal taxes and general taxes could be abolished with a 1% financial UK transaction tax. So uh, those two points there now lead us to what are the implications for you uh, as individuals listening to this. Uh, you might be saying to yourself, well, how does that affect us? How does that affect the price of rice, right? Because we're in the UK and this is happening in the United States. What you should remember above all else is that the Federal Reserve, in conjunction and cahoots and in orchestration with the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, the Bank of France, the World Bank, uh, is primarily uh, one interlocked system. And if one leg or one part of that tentacled octopus is pulled off, then there is a great incidence or coincidence that the other legs would follow. So as far as the Bank of England is concerned, as far as Westminster Parliament is concerned, the main priority for us now as this uh, this domino effect takes place, in part due to um, the Yellow Vest movement, as you see in, in France, um, uh, which is, is, is echoing through Europe and hopefully will manifest in a greater, uh, a, a greater support unit within the United Kingdom, is the fact that we need to change and we need to change dramatically because if we're entitled or prepared to accept the same old soup to be served to us as the, the government wants, then we'll end up with the same taste in our mouth that we've had for the past several hundred, if not thousand years. So at a time of change, we need change and we're being helped. So there are parties involved worldwide that want real and meaningful change. And the real and meaningful change means the sweeping out of the 650 traitors that inhabit the Westminster Parliament. And it's a sea change and we need individuals who are realistic, competent and knowledgeable to take their places. So this is why if you look at the, the links below, the Brexit to Exit.org website and the rules for radicals.org uh, website. Uh, we're encouraging people to go there, get involved, get in touch with us so we can now lead you and show you the way forward uh, over the next uh, few months, which are going to be very, very interesting because above all else, Theresa May's agenda is to kick the can down the road, stall for time, and make sure that the European Union holds on to one of its prized possessions. And please, for all those who are in the Remainer agenda, please ask yourself, why is it that no one has ever been allowed to leave the club? And for all those who are Remainers, please ask yourself, how come, 
How come, as someone who wishes to remain, what would you say that the economic benefits of remaining are when you look at Italy, bankrupt, Greece, bankrupt, Spain, bankrupt, Portugal, bankrupt, the Irish bailed out and bankrupt, France economically on its knees, and the UK who want to leave being punished to the nth degree to prevent them leaving. So, why would any Remainer, apart from loving the colour of the flag, wish to remain within the European Union when there's no major economic benefit? And please also do not forget that these scaremongering tactics about Armageddon and financial doom and the end of the world uh, manifesting because we leave are a complete nonsense when borne out by the fact that the biggest single trading partners with the European Union, who don't have any tariff agreements, who don't have any exchange rate mechanisms in place, do not have any favourable trading conditions, are first place China and secondly the United States. How can that be a meaningful economic trading zone which is exclusively there for the benefit of the members, if 90% of the goods that are coming in, and if you doubt the number, look at every single thing that you own, from your TV, through your computer, through your loudspeakers, through the plastic toys in your, your McDonald's bags, um, they're all produced and manufactured and exported from China. So, there is no need for... Uh, a, a albatross type relationship tied around our neck with the European Union. We can make England great again as an independent meritocracy trading zone operating independently on its own. Um, so to conclude, um, I'd just like to touch then on a, as a final point. Um, we're bank. Uh, We're Bank was created in 2011. It was launched in the United Kingdom in 2015, in April, and is still, to this day, continuing in a powerful, uh, meaningful way. And it was predicated on the potential that is coming your way now for an economic and financial um, disaster. So if the World Bank and the European Central Bank and the IMF with Christine Lagarde get their way, they will be looking to introduce an SDR, Special Drawing Rights uh, Currency. They will make cash obsolete, and this is the plan. Um, the United States government and the United States military junta, which have been in control since 2015, have a contingency plan. Part of that contingency plan, many of you may not realise, is that the Department of Defence, the Paymaster General of the United States military, has in their coffers uh, a fund of just over 21, wait for it, 21 trillion dollars positioned to, I suggest, ensure that any move made by the Federal Reserve or the IMF and World Bank to collapse the United States economy is countered by an injection of cloned funds that the military will step in to ensure is, uh, is made available. So, with the 800,000 um, Federal Reserve, sorry, Federal Government employees that cannot make their payments on their mortgage or meet their monthly demands at the moment, um, there is a move there to ensure that their payments um, obviously aren't arriving as a form of salary, but equally their outgoings are not considered to be um, as high. So a moratorium seems to be being asked to be placed on them for the paying of their mortgages and other debts and other bills. So what we're seeing here is that this could be the prelude to a debt jubilee or an intervention by the military to head off financial and economic mayhem. That being said, if that is good enough for the United States, then it's good enough for the people of the United Kingdom, and more particularly for the people in England. So, I'm trying to make sure that this video goes far, it goes wide, 
please circulate it to everyone you can. And this type of information that I'm giving to you, some people may say they've heard rumours about it elsewhere, uh, but I assure you that not this information isn't being delivered, as far as I am aware, by any other platform on the internet in, in, in as an intricate or as meaningful a way as this. So, we've covered Julian Assange not being in the Ecuadorian embassy some time back. I think I covered that in November 2016. I've also told you that um, George Soros has also not been around for a long time and is dead. Uh, many people say, well, you need to prove it with evidence. No, what I'd like to say is, who on this planet has seen George Soros in activity, walking around, talking, since November or October 2016? Why has there been no proof of life for Julian Assange in the last several years? Okay, so even though some people say they are where they are, I say they are not, and at the moment have not been proven wrong. So, please touch the button downstairs uh, there, subscribe it, like it, because as I've understood, people do get deselected or unsubscribed from time to time. Uh, please come to the meetings. We need to start bringing this uh, social activity onto the streets necessarily. We cannot rely just on the ballot box at the moment. We need a peaceful form of protesting and that can only be done by people physically showing that they have had enough, they're as mad as hell and then just not going to take any more. Short of that, the government will just keep kicking that can down the road forever and nothing will ever come of your wishes, hopes and desires. Uh, I think I've covered everything, uh, but as I've redone this video, because the background noise when I previously did it was far too high, um, I'm just checking that I covered all the things that I covered in the previous one, I hope. Um, yeah, so I think I've covered everything. Um, please, as I say, join, subscribe, come to the meetings. And it's Peter of England uh, signing off here now. And more videos coming soon. And thank you.